outside the lining. You can tell me what springs to mind. First impression, like say Alan, for example, what comes to mind right away about Alan? Um, party, party, party. Um, and um, his his look, his uh, hat, the feathers, and his his uh, stage appearance. He was a he was a showman. Laid back, bashful, shy. Just he was. You have to. I hate to really point the finger at him, but he was kind of. He's like a loner, shy type person, but drugs. Just I mean, he's just he's stay wiped out. So I guess it's easier for him to stay completely screwed up than it is to face an interview or face a fact that he's a, he's part of the band. But now that now he wants to take he wants to take credit for credit that he has nothing to do with. You know. Leon. Leon, uh, entertainer, uh, has to have people around him all the time, constantly. I mean, he would beat your brains up, trying to make sure he's got the right people around him. And bar, run around, run around, run around. He'd go to a bar, and you'd, you'd have to just double check him. Uh, Billy. Billy was a, and is a severe alcoholic. Severe, severe alcoholic. He would like to uh, go to his room or go to the bar just get drunk drunk and go to his room and just he like watch TV and he was a pretty good family man. He'd stay on the phone to his wife and his kids, but just he just like just stay drunk. Screwdrivers, drunk, 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 you know. Armor Turner's a weird character. He was more like a I want to call him a hypocrite, you know. He was he would preach the religion and all this other stuff and then behind the door he'd be drunk or drugs, whatever the situation was. But he was a weird armor's a weird character. He liked to get away with friends and kind of like Leon, but just a little different. He, he had, had to have people around him to show that, you know, hey, I was a band, I'm a drummer. Got to have the uh, attention. Got to be the center of attraction. How about Bob Burns? Bob Burns, way back then, he was, he was, uh, of course, I didn't think maybe he was married back then. And so uh, he was a bad. He would drink, but his thing was, mushroom tea and, and, and bad drugs, bad, 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 and actually when he, when he got killed that girl in the car wreck, uh, that's when he left the band, actually, she got that, she kind of like flipped out, you know, the drugs, and then I guess the thing about the girl, killing the girl, but it just, he just flipped out, but as far as, he was a good guy, good old rebel country boy, you know, good guy, but them drugs and booze, Destroyed a lot of folks, you know. Uh, I'm sorry, I heard that. So he was, he was driving in, a, in an accident. A girl okay, he just built this Buckman Bridge here, about 75 probably. Just finished it. And uh, he was going across it. She was actually a Navy whack, a young Navy whack girl. And uh, she was in uh, the, probably the right hand lane, and Bob was passing her. And he was probably drugged out and drunk. And the way she normally was then, he swerved over and hit her bumper. She lost control of her car, flipped over and hit the bridge and it killed her. And so he, uh, it flipped him out. I mean, it just, and the drugs too, but it, it did flip him out. He was actually uh, into, institutionalized for some time after that uh, because of the, the rehabs and so forth and so on, but it, 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 uh, it flipped him out. And with Ed King? Ed King left the band in 75 and I only knew him briefly from rehearsals and he left that Strawberry Alarm Clock band. Ed King was a severe drug addict. I mean, a severe, he was probably the worst one in the bunch. And you didn't, you'd have to know him to be a musician and to be with him. And I didn't put up none of that stuff. And I hated druggies, you know. So I didn't associate with him, period. And he was, when he wasn't rehearsing, he was home. And uh, he wasn't there. He was only there for rehearsing. He wasn't there as a friend or fishing or whatever, see. And he left the band in 75, and I never saw him again until he came back with the band as a tribute tour, which was against Alan Collins' as wish. Um, I'd always heard that, uh, well, I just, why I always thought that Big King joined the band, that Cooper brought him in for the pronounced sessions. Is right. that right, or what? Well, <laughs> When Skinner first started out, uh, they had he wasn't there, and I think it, uh, 
Cooper brought him in for the sessions, and then Ronnie kept him as a live musician.